Forest health essentially is a measure of not only the productivity of a forest, but also of forest function. People think of the Wood Buffalo Environmental Association, they most commonly think of a significant capacity in air quality monitoring. However, since 2008, the Terrestrial Ecosystems Effects Monitoring Program has actually grown in size and complexity to equal our capacity in air quality monitoring. What we're doing out here today is sampling the, the vegetation, all the different vegetation components in the forest, from the trees to the plants that grow in the understory and the lichens and mosses that grow. In. And the idea is to get a good quantification of what's here at this point in time to see how it changes in relation to atmospheric pollution. For the first time, we will be able to apportion a percentage of sulfur that we find at point X on the landscape back to a source type, such as foil sands processing, the mine fleet, natural sources such as forest fire, and the urban environment in Fort McMurray. With the significant threefold increase in funding, we have created a team of 35 highly respected, incredible international scientists who are working on many of the key points along the air pollutant pathway. Each of these lichens um, have their own characteristics in terms of their uh, ability to tolerate uh, poor or changing air quality and that makes them then ideal indicators as what's going on in a particular uh, geographical area. So you can imagine if there are pollutants in a given region, those pollutants get washed out of the air by the rain. The rain with those pollutants in it is then uh, soaked up by the lichen. In this particular study, uh, what we're doing is collecting uh, this lichen and others from uh, about 20 sites in this region and then uh, sending them for chemical analysis. Uh, particularly, we're looking for the levels of sulfur and nitrogen to map the distribution of air pollutants in this particular region. The data that we collect from uh, here, we can then compare the results to similar uh, work in Northern Ontario, for example, also in Fennel, Scandinavia, uh, in Russia and in Alaska. So it allows us then to put the data that we get here into a global context. The sign of a, a good healthy forest is an active microbial community. There's millions of species of bacteria and fungi in a little gram of soil. These different microbes are very important in terms of nutrient cycling in the soil. They're vital really for the ecosystem, so we want to know if, if there's any effect being had on the, the microbial population. There's so much that we don't know yet, but it, it doesn't mean just because you can't see it and it's small, it's not unimportant. It's really, really vital. You can't manage what you don't understand. And we need to understand more about air quality, more about the state of the terrestrial systems. In this particular region, very, very large decisions have been and will be made around industrial development. It's very, very important for our stakeholders and for government regulators and policymakers to have absolutely the best, most accurate scientific information they can in order to make the soundest decisions possible. We have expanded the methods and the timescales by which we measure forest health to detect the very, very earliest signs of change so that we can follow that and 
stakeholders can then take action long before any change ever moves to effect, let alone an impact.